I'm Sven. I just came from Germany, so I'm a bit jet lagged. Uh, but I'm very happy to, he to be here to speak about a specific topic. Mm, I'm a member of the DSX uh, dev team where I work as a kind of software engineer, backend engineer, and a data scientist, so I can do both, which is quite fun. And during my work, I was often asked, hey Sven, Apache Spark, big data engine, is it useful when I have a small data set? And the answer was kind of yes. And I hacked a little bit, which is basically the foundation of this small talk here. And hope you learn something which might help during your daily work or private um, hacks. So today I would like to talk about hyperparameter optimization and where it can be an uh, interface where scikit-learn and PySpark meets. So you all most likely are familiar with the data science workflow where you have a business problem, a very interesting one. You explore and understand the data, you enter the modeling phase and evaluate it and deploy it uh, to have a solution for your problem. So modeling is one of the most fun part of the cycle, but also there are a lot, a lot of steps which are very tedious and boring. And during this modeling phase, you have to tune the models. And the models have a lot of knobs. And this task is actually embarrassingly paralyzable in, in many cases. No? Not working? Ah, oh, no, it's working. So you can imagine those uh, models as boxes where they have on the surface different knobs. And different knobs may, uh, if they tune them the right way, they could improve the robustness of the model or they could influence in complexity or help with the class and balance. And those models can have a lot of those knobs. Okay, so in terms of hyperparameter optimization, what is that kind of a problem? It's the problem of choosing the set of parameters for a learning algorithm with respect to a certain quality measure where you set it uh, to say how good is the model. There are different approaches like grid search, random search, or Bayesian optimization, but for the sake of this short talk, I will concentrate on the grid search today. And I'd like to start with a short question. Who of you knows what this is? Yeah, but this in specific. The living room of Big Bang Theory, exactly. <laughs> okay, so I hope everybody of you knows Big Bang Theory and the character Sheldon. Okay, perfect. So who of you knows what is Sheldon? Uh, well, he's very picky, right? And he has in this room a specific spot where he likes to sit. So since hyperparameter optimization is very like yeah, abstract and some people think it's boring, I would like to give you a vivid analogy so you have to uh, keep think about this throughout the talk, okay? So um, in terms of machine learning and hyperparameterization, imagine that this living room is a box where Sheldon is a learner, and there are two parameters for the x and y coordinates of the room. And the goal of uh, the learner, Sheldon, is to find the optimal spot for his living room. And we all know Sheldon is very picky. Okay, and you can imagine that way. And the days throughout the year are the training instances or the test data and the training data for the learner, which is Sheldon. So imagine that. And for that, one way, which is embarrassing, paralyzable, is a grid search. So Sheldon just goes through all, out all the spots of this living room and the two parameters of this Sheldon learner is x and y in this box. And when he spends the days of, without the year, in, within a year, he learns uh, about the optimality of his spot. And he has like, several features like, like weather conditions, lighting conditions, weather television, uh, wind temperature, and so on and so on, because he's very picky, right? So you could say, OK, there are different techniques to do uh, hyperparameter optimization. For example, like a random search, where Sheldon would just spawn randomly a few times, and with the probability, after a few iterations, he could reach around 90% of an optimal spot. But Sheldon is yeah, perfectionistic, so that will not work. There's another approach called Bayesian optimization, but Sheldon in this box would know the underlying distribution of his optimality and the, the, the feature set, and that he can omit certain spaces. But since Sheldon is paranoid, that will also not work. Okay, so at least us for Sheldon is a good search and for us as well. And the goal is that Sheldon finds the final spot where he says, okay, here I sit, here's my optimal space, here I, I, I will be. And the same is for the machine learning algorithm in terms of hyperparameter optimization. So 
But after we know what is now how hyperparameter optimization, we have to answer the question, what is cross-validation? Because it comes hand in hand, just a short intro. So assuming Shell would just learn one year, and you take those blue, bar, blue lines as training data and the, and the, and the green uh, line as a validation set, you could get a score for your optimality, for example, accuracy. The thing is, if you split it a certain way, it's not stable. So Shell would learn, for example, during the winter months and predict for the summer months, and then, oh, no, the, the spot is not perfect in the summer, only in the winter. So that's why Shell has to train on different months throughout the year, so, to, so we have also to split the data a different way and aggregate about around the accuracy so we have a more stable result for the a parameter set. No? Not working. Okay. Who of you uses use scikit-learn and Python? Cool, a lot. So for this could be for you specifically interesting because it gives you a mean if you even have small data to start using PySpark. Okay. So here I just uh, generated with scikit-learn some uh, training and test data, split it randomly, and built a default random forest classifier with all those default parameters. Okay. I fit it to the training data. I predict for the training data, well, I get a very good accuracy score. Then I predict the test data, and well, yes, it's overfitted, because it sucks. To overcome this, we need to tune the parameters. So back to the knobs. So Random Forest has a lot of different knobs, and each of those could improve the test score of our algorithm. So for simplicity, I just built a grid now with number of estimators and the max depths of the trees in the random forest. And now this is our search space, like in the living room, okay? And Sheldon is our learner, and random forest is Sheldon. So here you see the scikit-learn code uh, to perform a grid search for this random uh, forest classifier. And you set the cross-validation to three, so we have a more stable result. And out of this grid, there are around 528 unique jobs. And with one core, you need around 30 minutes, OK? Which is a lot. So if you increase the data a little bit or build the grid bigger, it becomes more and more, even two hours or half a day or a day, maybe, for a very simple problem, actually. So a second, but it, it's worth it. So after the 30 minutes, you uh, get a uh, best estimator after the grid search where the max test is 15 and the number of estimators is 200. And if you now perform the uh, test prediction, you get accuracy of 0 0.67 around, so a big improvement. So definitely pays off to do the param parameter optimization. So now assume you would have, during this tedious step, a Spark cluster available. In this uh, part of this notebook, I have a Spark context available. You see it uh, in the first line. And then you can import a package called Spark Scilearn. And basically, the code does not change as much, except that you pass for the first argument the Spark context, which is the entry to your cluster. And then you say, still, cross-validation is three. Uh, you want to tune the parameters, which is the grid we defined beforehand. And it still uh, will be 20, uh, 500 jobs around. The only difference is, for my experiment, I took an enterprise cluster on DSX. And yeah, it took only 28 seconds. And depending on how much money we are willing to spend and how big your cluster is, you make actually a very tedious task for which you have to wait, a very interactive one, where you just have to wait a few minutes instead of a few hours, and you can just proceed, because this is a no-brainer. You don't have to spend many, a lot of time on it. So the goal is actually to save time, because this time you save waiting, you can invest in actually uh, solving the business problem, or do more fun part, which is feature engineering, or try other models, right? So the ultimate goal is to have faster cycles, and especially if you're working in a, in a Jupyter notebook, you don't want to wait for your parameters like eight hours. Maybe 30 minutes is acceptable, but otherwise you have to go to sleep and the next morning you check your parameters. And assuming you don't have one single classifier, but maybe 10 in your ensemble, then you have a lot of grids you have to train. And with a few bugs and a cluster, you could do it very fast. So, you also uh, see on Kaggle that those parameters you find are also of high value. So they are like endless discussion boards about when, on what, when or if to share parameters 
for, for models because it takes a lot of time to train them. For example, one guy here took the whole weekend to tune his parameters so he come, comes up to the top scorers in the uh, leaderboard. And others say, okay, you should not share those parameters uh, like three weeks before because it takes weeks to tune them. So a lot of people have the same approach. They are very similar. And if you know the parameters, you can just take the approach, ensemble with your own one, and you are better off than alone. So those parameters are of value. So uh, there's a package called Spark SQL Learn, as I mentioned. You can install it via pip, then it's working. Uh, I, test, uh, I used DSX as my platform for experiments, where I generated arbitrary data sets using scikit learn for regression and uh, classification problems. Um, actually, it's working quite well. And you just have to pip install it. Uh, on DSX, we have a Spark context available. And then you can just do your own experiments. It's quite fun. So I hope uh, you will like it. And yeah, that's it. Yes? I have two questions. So first, uh, when you use the free, when you train the run code, you only use the spot SQL library. Do you, for the X and Y of matrices, do you convert that to kind of data frame or use the spot data frame? Uh, actually, um, what you're talking about is a deep integration. So this integration package. Uh, you don't transform anything. So you, you have a, you start with a scikit-learn stack, right? You de define your data, you the grid, and what you do is you just import this package, Spark SQL Learn. You don't have to convert anything, and give him the uh, the classifier, the scikit-learn classifier, the Spark context, and the grid, and that's all. One line of code change, nothing, nothing more. Two. Actually, two lines for the import. No, the, the grid is just a dictionary, like a uh, key to uh, value. Key is a parameter type, or the string of the parameter, and the value is the list of the uh, values you want to test. You don't have to transform anything. I think he's it, talking about the train and test data. I think he's talking about the data you actually use to make each model. Ah, okay, wait a second. No, you do not. See? I was just asking is X, task, uh, X train, Y train, are they spark data frame or do you have to convert that to pandas data frame before you apply this? No, this is uh, just pandas data frame. So you do have to convert spark data frame to pandas data frame besides spark because they're different. Yeah, but you don't do it explicitly. So you just use the API, so that's why you have this wrapper package. You import it, and you only change the, the call for the grid search. Nothing else. Because what, what I do in Spark is, you know, first you create a Spark data frame. Yes. But before you apply any, you can apply any uh, Python pandas package, mm -hmm. you have to use that two pandas function. No. To convert that to uh, pandas okay. Frame no. Spark. No, you do, don't have to do that for this approach. Okay. So because for that you have the package imported. Okay. Um, there is a grid search function in Spark ML. Like yes. So what's the advantage of this thing over now? As I stated in the beginning, so people ask, okay, when I don't have that much data, can I still use Spark in a, for the normal, normal Python stack? And that is the answer. So if you don't have like terabytes of data and uh, don't need like a, a cluster for a computation, then you will normally start with a normal Python stack, build your models. But at this point, where you have an embarrassingly parallelizable problem, where you need a cluster, you can jump in and use Spark. Because if you use Spark and you don't have that, that much data, then there's a, so assuming you have a XY coordinate and you increase the data size and you measure the time for computing the results for machine learning algorithms, there would be a turnover at a certain point where it pays off to use Spark. And before that point, it will not necessarily be faster using Spark. Understand? So depending on your size of your data, if you have big data problem, you would start with PySpark right away. But there are a lot of people out there who start with a small sample or a small data set and will reach this step of the parameter optimization where they have to wait. And this package where you distribute the hyperparameter optimization, the grid search, only on Spark could help you to reduce the time for waiting for it. That's all. Any 
Any other questions? Yes? You mean a choice of algorithms? Yeah, That's a very tough question. There's no standard choice, as there's no best algorithm. So, I mean, first of all, if you get a data set from your customer, no, 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 there's no three best algorithms. I will not tell you that, but I will tell you an approach to determine those best three algorithms. So, for example, when a customer gives me a data set, normally it comes with a business question, which is, I want to make more money or I want to reduce the cost, right? So simple as that. So you want to maximize the co wait, maximize the revenue and minimize the cost normally. Then you get a lot of data, which is numerical or categorical. And then you have to specify the target. So normally in, on Kaggle competitions, you get a nice target feature evaluation that you normally don't get from a customer. Customer just gives you dirty data and wants to save money or make more money. So from the data you have first to mathematically mod model the problem correctly. So for example, if you want to predict the revenue, it's a regression problem. And if you want to classify like fraud versus non-fraud, maybe it's then a classification problem or an anomaly detection. When you, when you don't have labels, it's clustering. So I think those first categories of algorithms I can give you to determine the problem. And then I would say there are a lot of different blocks I don't uh, have here in mind, but uh, for example, if the collinearity of the data is too high, you, you cannot use logistic regression. If the number of columns is too big, you cannot use random forest. So you have to try to, from the data, to derive those constraints on a paper and try to map or to, to exclude all the algorithms which will not fulfill the constraints. And then you will get a set of those three algorithms. Does this help for you? Okay. Oh yes, yes, yes. So um, there's an awesome free book called Elements of Statistical Learning from Tibi Shirani and Hasty, which is a lot of math. This one is for free. And then there's a less math version called Introduction to Statistical Learning with R code, which is also for free. So take those two books, read them, do the code samples, and then you get an intuition which algorithm to take, how the data must be, how you have to set up your cross-validation pipeline, evaluation. Yeah, I think that would be a good approach. I can share them later with you. Yeah. Any other questions? Okay, thanks for your attention.